You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. We have slain many dragons. We are the Polyhedron Society. We have braved the depths of Gallowspire. We are the Polyhedron Society. We have maintained the masquerade. We are the Polyhedron Society. We shot first. We are the Polyhedron Society. And we aim to misbehave because we are the Polyhedron Society. The Polyhedron Society proudly presents its actual play RPG podcast. Tune in each week as we immerse you in one of many stories through the art of collective storytelling and role-playing games. The Polyhedron Society has decades of gaming experience and we use that experience to create rich characters and lavish stories. Hello and welcome to the Monster Sci-Fi Show Podcast. I am your host, The Monster. Where the hell have I been lately? Well, I tell you. It's been a long, exhausting month already. And I do apologize for the lack of podcasts since the beginning of June. As I've been wanting to do each week at least a short podcast on sci-fi news. So, I do have some sci-fi news, but... Mainly, I'm going to be talking about is the Walt Disney uh, animation presentation they're planning to do tomorrow, June 30th, uh, which you can look at it live through Facebook, which is going to be 9 a.m. Pacific time, which will be 12 o'clock Eastern if you live on the East Coast. But before I get into that, uh, I do want to talk about a couple of thing, things. Uh, one of the things that happened at the beginning of the month was we got something that became this. So, if you kind of know what that sounds like, well, that's my new cat, or our new cat. His, her name actually is Kylo, after Kylo Ren. Um, there was a black kitten that was in our porch backyard porch area and was looking very cute and came into our house um, noticed that she was already fixed and she has to be at least about six months old and she's kind of adopted us so I've been kind of taking care of her she did get ill a little while after we let her in because we had other cats that we take care of from the outside they came in and she caught a bug, but took her to the vet and got antibiotics, and she's doing great. So my daughter kept fighting me with the name Kylo. But when I looked at the kitten, and it's all black. Uh, there's very little little maybe patches of white here and there, but it just reminded me of Kylo Ren, only because Kylo Ren is all black. And once you go beneath that surface, you know how... Kylo Ren is not all powerful. So I look at this kitten and you think it's, it's a big, powerful, mean cat, but it's not. It's just an adorable kitten that just happens to look black. And Kylo was the first thing that came to my head. So, so yeah, we have a new kitten. So it's been kind of fun having a cat again. And we, we miss our three cats that I got when my right before my wife and I got married. And we've had them for the last one passed away uh, shortly last year. So almost 16 years. Um, and in different years, we, we lost them along the way. But the last one lasted almost 16 years. So they lived a very long life. And I'm sad for them to go. But I'm also happy that we do have, you know, another kitten. Not that I don't love the cats that we take care of outside. But it's nice to have a kitten that we can raise so to speak so um the other thing that i've been watching that i've caught myself by surprise and loving this series is voltron on netflix which i did finally write another piece on movie pilot 
So if you follow me on Movie Pilot, I did write a little article about what makes this Voltron different and better, so to speak, because I grew up with many fans back in the 80s watching Voltron, and uh, there were some problems early on, but you know what? I was okay with it. But this Voltron really makes up for it, so I think you'll be really happy to hear or read my thoughts on Voltron. So again, go to Movie Pilot and look up the monster, and you'll see, do we need another Voltron series? And if not, in the show notes, there will be a link for that article. So lastly, I'm going to be talking about is, again, this thing that I noticed that this is a kind of a, I guess, like an annual project of giving some news for what's coming ahead for Disney with their lineup. I did also, in this long absence, watch Zootopia, which was very enjoyable. My only gripe is this one moment that they played in the trailers, which is brilliant, is with the sloth named Flash down in the DMV, and him being a sloth is very slow. And by the time I get to that moment in the movie, I was like, okay, ha ha. But it wasn't the ha ha moment that I saw in the movie theaters and laughed out loud. And I'm like, that's brilliant. So the movie was fine. The only thing that caught me by surprise that I laughed just as out loud was towards the end of the movie. Um, there was a sheep that was working in a lab and there was a knock on the door and the sheep said something to the fact of Walt and Jesse have my lattes and it was just in reference to Breaking Bad so in the middle of this little kids movie there was a Breaking Bad (laughs) reference which threw me for a loop but again I loved that and I just really thought that was really clever and meant for like hey guys I know you with your kids. Here's a reference for you to enjoy. So it was funny, and I loved it. So is it enough for me to buy it? I don't know. I know Mr. Gene does have a copy of it, but my wife liked it enough more than I did, so I'm still on the fence about Zootopia. So in any case, the news that's supposedly coming up ahead, um, we have uh, Moana, that new movie that's coming out, Later this year, November, there's another one called Gigantic, which is scheduled for 2018. Another retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk, or at least it's a story inspired by Jack and the Beanstalk. Honestly, I can do without another Jack and the Beanstalk story or any big dudes coming about. BFG is going to be coming out in a few days, which it doesn't seem to be doing any thing for me or really for this time of the year really drawing a crowd because ID4 or Independence Day Resurgence has kind of flopped in movie theaters and then we have BFG along with Tarzan so we seem to be going into a bit of a a spiral there Um, there are plans for Wreck-It Ralph 2 which oddly enough I'm planning to do a Wreck-It Ralph podcast for my Library for the teens. So we actually did one the other day on Ender's Game, which I'm finally got some teens to be part of this podcast. And then tomorrow I'll get to actually edit this and put the show together. And then the next show is going to be Wreck It Ralph. So this is actually good news that this is going to be coming out. And then after that, of course, everyone's favorite Frozen 2 Electric Boogaloo is going to be coming out, I guess, something like. Sometime in 2020, so we still got a couple of years away, but I'm sure whenever it does come out, it's going to have huge <laughs> numbers in the box office. So, and that's all I'm going to be talking about for right now for the sci fi news. But I did want to say that I do have a special guest on this show in which I recorded this earlier today. And it's a good friend of mine who is a listener to the show, believe it or not. So it's not just me and my mom or the cats that listen to the podcast, and of course, and Gene. But 
someone else actually listens. So I have some information that I want to relate to you. So sit back and enjoy our discussion. It's going to be about 30 minutes long, but I think it's well worth your time. So again, enjoy. As I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, I do have a guest who is going to appear on this show. And from the music that you're hearing right now, which is from Firefly slash Serenity, not necessarily a guest from that show, but I do have a dear friend. Her name is Connie, who is doing a Firefly event that's coming up real soon, and I want you to give a listen and hopefully if you're here in the Miami and Fort Lauderdale area to come down and join us. So sit back and enjoy our conversation about this upcoming event. So let's just start off with a very easy thing, how we first met at the the store. B. Dalton's? B. Dalton Bookseller. Dayland Mall. Dayland Mall, 1991, 92-ish? Ish. Ish. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think I worked there after 93. Yeah. No, because 93 borders opened up. So that's where I got that job. Yes. So, right from the onset, I think you and I got along pretty quickly. (laughs) Well enough. Because we hated what we were doing. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Especially selling those goddamn cards. For oh, five dollars. Yes, discount card. That was ten dollars after all. Was it ten, yeah. I think it was ten dollars. So that was not fun. Uh, but we also had um, a thing about Quantum Leap because it was coming down to its season finale or series finale. Yes. One of my favorite shows, Quantum Leap. And um, when we saw the last episode, we weren't happy about it. I don't think I was happy about that now. No, we weren't. So I wrote the fan fiction. Yes. Of me jumping, or Sam jumping into me <laughs> at the bookstore and me having, like, a normal experience but throwing up on a woman <laughs> in the library yeah, that, at the bookstore. <laughs> yes, I do remember that. Actually, I was looking for that recently <laughs> to see if I could still find it, and I couldn't. I thought I had saved it. Well, it's all right. It was still fun to write. Back when I used to write a lot more than I do now. And then off and on... We somehow still kept in touch through the years. Um, you gave me all your collection of Star Trek memorabilia. Some of it. I, Some of it. I have a few novels left. Well, you gave me a lot of. You gave me a couple of paintings. Oh, did I? Yeah, a couple of big prints. Your Star Trek fan magazines. Oh, my magazine. Still with the brown wrapper on it, and like the patches are still inside, which I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Um, and then I moved away for a while, I came back, and somehow we've always come back to this weird circle that we find each other. And it's been years since then that I think at the convention a couple of years ago. Two years ago at Florida Supercon. Yeah. You, that, were having, you had the petition for the library. Right, and you're writing the petition right in front of me, and I'm, like, and I'm looking at the name, and I'm like looking at you. You have no idea that you're right in front of me, and then I'm like, Connie? <laughs> I recognized you right away. Uh uh-uh. I said Montgomery Lopez. No, no, afterwards. Okay. As in, remember that restraining order? Montgomery Lopez. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So. No, I was surprised. I was like, wow. I knew you had. Did I know you worked at the library? I don't remember. I don't think so. I, it was years after Borders had closed, so. You're, you're right, you're right. Because every time I went to Borders, I always looked for you. And yeah. then you weren't there anymore. Yeah, exactly. And then it wasn't there anymore. <laughs> Sadly. Now you just have the bookstore in the grove. Yeah. Which kind of sucks. But then you became a lawyer. I did. Which? Right after, right after I left the bookstore, I went to law school. Yeah. Which I remember you telling me that. And then, so I was really happy that you actually went through with that. Because some people just realized, no, I don't want to be a lawyer and change the, oh, the plans Oh, unfortunately, that's always been true. But here I am anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Once you borrowed all that money, you got to do something. <laughs> Why? Well, something, something with the diploma. That's all. But one of the cool things that I, um, you do now, um, you do uh, your crafting. Your key. Yes, I do. Well, I started out non geek crafting, but <laughs> geek crafting just came naturally too. Mm -hmm. uh, I started. I took knitting back up after many, many years of not knitting and uh, started making hats. And then the Jane hat was obviously the next step that every good geek knitter has to make. So now I've probably made a hundred of them yeah. <laughs> over the years. Uh, the Doctor Who scarf was one of my bigger projects, which mm -hmm. I think I've made three or four of them now. The one I have now is about 13 foot long. I might be wearing that at Florida Supercon if I haven't. If it's not too hot, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it's always going to be hot because uh, someone's. It's always smelly. Yeah. No matter which con you go to, some way or somehow, someone's not wearing deodorant, and it just stinks up the whole place. I don't know if I have that issue, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll try to smell harder when I'm there to see yeah, if, I'm it, sure if it comes will. true. <laughs> and one of the things that I actually impressed by you is the fact that you do cosplay. You dressed up as Constantine. That was my only time ever. I know, but still, you, <laughs> you went through, even got the little business card, too. I did, and, well... And I was telling you, no, you had to cross out about you dabble <laughs> I did. in mysticism. Or, because he didn't. He thought the, the... What was the line that he said? It was something that he... It was, he didn't, it was too pretentious or something yeah, to that effect. Yeah, something to that effect. Yeah. Too pretentious, yes. So I thought that was clever and like... Oh, you got to do the little scratch out. <laughs> I, I was obsessed with the show at the time, and mm. it was the easiest costume I could think of. And I had a trench coat and a red tie, so right. kind of worked out. And you were blonde, so you're both kind of on the exact same wavelength. <laughs> so. Yes, that was my one and only cosplay. I probably will not be doing that again, unless you count this scarf alone. There you go. I will have other clothes on, I swear. So. Um, but supposedly we're going to get Constantine on Legends of Tomorrow, season two. Somewhere in that season he's going to appear. So that's kind of cool that we're getting to have the character back. It'll be Matt Ryan still? Yeah. He was on uh, with Arrow. Yeah, so. I didn't like that episode that much, to be he honest. It was fun. I was like, hey, he's still alive. Even yeah, though it was a flashback. No, just as a... It was a throwaway scene. It was, but a, I'm like, it was a strange show. Yeah. But, you know. Any Constantine, I guess, is better than no than Constantine. Constantine at all. Yeah. So aside from that, the other thing that you do, in which why I have you on this podcast, is you're doing a, a Serenity charity event, which I was able to attend last year with uh, my co-host, Mr. Gene, and my kids. And we're going to do this again this year. So I, that's why we're here, to talk about that. Yes, we are doing what is called a Can't Stop the Serenity event. It is a worldwide screening. By worldwide, I just mean they have them in cities all over the world. <laughs> uh, we, we screen the movie Serenity. It is a charity event. Uh, we are doing it this July 16th. It's a Saturday night at Tom's NFL Bar and Grill in Miami Springs, Florida. And what time is that going to be? It starts at 5. 5. Okay. We will be doing a screening of Dr. Horrible. I believe I'm supposed to give you some language as to who is providing that, and I cannot remember, so I hope I don't get in trouble for that. <laughs> uh, we're not even allowed to use his name that rhymes with Moss in relation to Dr. Horrible, so. But we will have the movie Serenity, we'll have some games, we always have a nice raffle with lots of good prizes. And uh, we may have some live music, I'm still working on that. Yeah. Or it'll be canned, but whatever. Whatever. But um, if I remember correctly, I saw on your website that you raised how much last year? Oh, uh, like I believe was it eight hundred? Eight hundred. I. That's not. It might. It might have been about eight hundred dollars. Yeah. What? Um, should I tell you a little bit about yeah. the actual event? Um, this is actually off the Can't Stop the Serenity website, but it just gives you a little overview of what's been going on. These events have been going on since 2006. They've raised over a million dollars over the years for charities. The main charity is Equality Now, which is uh, Joss Whedon's charity of choice, and that's why uh, we get Serenity to scream, right. because Joss knows that the bulk of the money is going to go to Equality Now. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we are allowed to pick a local charity to donate a portion of our proceeds to, so we usually do pick a local charity or nonprofit. Right. Uh, so these events have been going on, this will be the 11th year. I've been in running them for nine, and I attended one before that, so I've only missed the first one. Ten straight. So these events, have, it's a great way to raise money for charity. It's a fun, fun thing, and I have gotten more... I, all I have to do is bring somebody to one of these events, they watch the movie, and they immediately run out and rent Firefly, or mm -hmm. buy it, or whatever, because it's like they can't get enough of those characters. Right. So it's definitely a huge way of bringing people to the brown coat universe, because I have never seen anybody not like that movie. So, and I bring people that have never watched a sci-fi flick ever. Hate it. Yeah. Hate Star Trek. Whatever. I know I actually know people that do. <laughs> well, I think a lot of it has to do that it's, it's very less technobabble. The characters themselves are easy to to like or dislike, like Jane, for example. Everyone doesn't like Jane. You're suggesting people don't like Jane? No. Oh, my goodness. There's a whole town after him. They love him. I thought it was just the doctor that was a little uptight. Well, well, he was near death. He loosened up. <laughs> True. But what are the things that you loved about watching the series? I mean... Um, I just think Mal is always my favorite character. I just can't get enough of him. I think anything that uh, Nathan is in is just amazing. <laughs> so he totally sold the whole show. It could have just been Captain Mal doing nothing but talking into a microphone. But, um, but no, the interplay between the characters... How, how, could, how do you, like... Zoe and Wash, the funniest mm -hmm. couple probably ever. Yeah. Just visually, let alone just their 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 verbal jabs and such. It's, it was just such a great show. The characters were. Yeah. You just wanted to hang out with them. You know how Fox always screws up with things. They showed the first episode of the train job as the first episode, rather than the pilot, which was aired later. Since I saw the train job and everything in order after that, then watching the pilot. I would have chosen the train job, the first one to go with, as opposed to going to the pilot. Which was better, the train job or watching the actual pilot? I was going to say, I didn't watch the show when it first came on, so I never saw it out of order. Oh, so you saw it in order? <laughs> I watched okay. it. I, I had watched different DVDs, Okay. actually. So um, the train job was a great episode. I don't think that was a bad first episode. No, it's not. It's it still it gave everyone a, at least a good entrance, and I think... The best scene to sum up who Mal was is the very end, where he kicks the guy who didn't want to take the money into the engine of the, the ship <laughs> and repeats that speech to the sack to the next guy and who was willing right. to take the money. Right. And that moment, I think, just won my heart from that point on. And I got that serious from that one moment. Was there a reason why that was picked as the first one rather than the one they... I think because it was more action-oriented. Oh, action-oriented, And it just had a lot more... Yeah, actually, I don't think that was a bad one to pick. Did yeah. they think... That, was that what they said was a problem with the show? Well, no, because, you know, <laughs> the, the things get done out of order. Because they, the, the pilot was done, but then it was delayed for some reason, and then it was aired much later towards the end of the season, which weren't going to be picked up. So it just kind of seemed like they threw it out of whack, but I thought it was actually a good option to go with the train job rather than learn where these characters came from, learn about the, the, the Battle of Serenity. Because okay, I, now I, I'm going to go home and watch the train job and make sure that <laughs> what you're saying is actually correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that was a bad choice. No, it's not. <laughs> so and I, again, I, I, I'm, I really love all the characters on that show. Everything about, even the Reavers are really cool to look at every once in a while. It's a great villain to have. So, But would you ever want to see a Serenity 2? No, they're way too old now. <laughs> Unless you're going to recast it. Would you really want to recast? I don't care. Really? You guys should get the right people. Wow, okay. Oh, have Unless you, you want like a senior citizen version of it. Well, I that's what Star Trek is about. It's a bunch of old folks. Yeah, and it the got universe. boring when they oh, had the old. first. I mean, I'm getting old, too. I don't want to watch me on TV. When were you on TV? <laughs> I was never on TV. <laughs> if I was, I should have been on in my 20s when I was on. Uh, but have you read any of the comics? Yes. Okay. Mm, almost all of them. I think the only one I missed was Shepard. Yeah. And there was a couple that you had um, as giveaways. 
I have some more this year. <laughs> Which I was kind of like, I was like, give me a lot more raffle tickets than I went, so I'm like hoping to get it. Oh. But I was able to get it through my library as a digital copy, and I read it, and it's really, really good. Which one? Um, I forgot the title of it. it was it's not the, the first one that came out. Um, those we left behind. The spoiler alert was Zoe. Something I forget the title, but it was there was a, a maybe, yeah, possibly. Hey, I'm supposed to mention. Yeah. That. Well, you could because the series is no longer care. on the air. You can say I don't spoilers. Know. I don't it's a, know. It's the show hasn't aired anything new. I'm not very up on the whole spoiler thing. So. No. If it's the the series where Zoe and having Wash's baby. Yeah. Which was just strange, but uh, awesome. Yeah, so it was very good. Yeah. Very good addition to the series. <laughs> so. Why, is there talk about a Serenity too? No, but oh. there was always an, an idea of, okay, we bought the DVDs after the series was canceled. Right. Joss rewarded us with, with the, the Serenity movie. So it made enough money, but it never went any further than that. So I with think the hour long week to week series was better than another movie, but we're not yeah. gonna get that either. No. But now that we have and of course the the rumor always come around on April first, Netflix is gonna pick up Serenity for a brand new one of thirteen episodes. And I'm like, no. Because you know very damn well on April first. That's <laughs> part of one of the stories that people would want to believe is true, which is not true. So there is still a fan base that really wants to see more Serenity. So I'm wondering if they can expand the verse with a new cast or do something different like they would do like Star Trek The Next Generation or Deep Space Nine. Oh, I would watch that. Yeah? I watch anything. <laughs> if you have any kind of link that even hints that Joss might have had, you know, right. was in the room at some point while somebody was doing something, well, I probably would Well, in like fairness, it. that's how we got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and that sucked. I love that show. I still can't believe people don't like that show. <laughs> we have problems. I have loved that show from the beginning, and I still do. I will give you the first... I am waiting for the next season. <laughs> I will I give can... you the first season, because <laughs> I was resentful of how it was going. But when Winter Soldier came out, that half made it so much better because of the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D., infiltrated by Hydra and all that. That half was fantastic. Second season, a little better. The the beginning was seeing uh, Creel, Creel, Crusher, whatever the guy that was the, the absorbing man. So oh, I yes. saw that character. I was like really happy. But the minute that uh, Daisy got her powers in Puerto Rico, uh, you said kinda, Puerto Rico like that's a bad thing. Well, just because I'm Puerto Rican and oh, trying to say stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was wondering. <laughs> But There's it, no powers in Puerto Rico. No, because I took it all away when I was born. But after that, it just the series kind of went weird with the whole inhuman storyline and third. But the characters are just interesting. No, they're I not. Really like them. And then they bring in Mockingbird and her husband Hunter and whatever. She How had. could you not like that couple? Because they were, they don't do anything, and I really can't see them being spun off to do Most Wanted. As a couple of series. Oh, that, see, I don't keep up to date. I didn't know they were going to Well, that, it, it, it's not going to get picked up anyway. But it oh. just doesn't seem that it was strong enough a series to, have to warrant a spinoff of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I so. love May. I love Agent Coulson. I love okay. Daisy. May's episode. And her play is Her backstory awesome. about why they call her the Calvary uh -huh. was fantastic. Gut-wrenching. That's one of the moments that I would always treasure about watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That episode alone makes all the crappy episodes they way through just to get to that point. But once that it was over, that's it. I don't have any other compelling backstories. Even Coulson, who we love and adore from The Avengers and all the other series, is kind of like... Meh. It's not fully utilized. I don't know. I just like the actor. I guess I just... I love this stuff. I but enjoy it. I do. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the ending. I love what they did with, uh, who's the bad guy? Wow, names are really escaping me today. <laughs> well, it was um, that guy <laughs> who was mixed with that other guy. May's ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Sex partner? I don't know who qualified as boyfriend. Yeah. What the hell is the name? I was going to say Wade, but it's not Wade. <laughs> okay, so we're both having a yes, we're having mental a breakdown. Moment. Okay. 
But anyway, he became he was killed halfway through the season. No, he was killed he was last killed season. Last season. And then he was re- no, no, he was halfway through the season. Was it halfway through the season? Yeah. Because Coulson killed him with his right, bionic right. hand, and then that new creature inhabited his body, and then he became Hive. Yes. Right. So Hive is the one that. I, didn't, was, I, I like that storyline. It didn't bother me. Okay. Here's another moment I will yeah. give you. Okay. The moment when Coulson is talking to Hive and he's distracting him, and he realized that he's a hologram. And then Coulson's like, I always wanted to do this. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's the moment that I laughed out loud. But they could have had so much more of that humor throughout that series. That's what I want to see more of. Of more of Coulson enjoying being the geek that we all know he can be. But I couldn't care about Fitz or Simmons. Those were actually probably my least favorite characters. Yeah, they're very bad. Um, I don't and I couldn't dislike care less. them, and I, uh, their whole relationship getting together thing was just like, yeah, whatever. So, that didn't, it didn't add to the show, but I didn't, it didn't bother me that much. <laughs> so that's the whole thing. It was just like, oh, come on. They really have nothing for me of, that's of interest. So I'm just going through this like a pity watch. I don't know why you bother this. <laughs> it's a pity watch. <laughs> You know, it's like know. the other kind of pity. You feel sorry like for it because you're stuck with it. You've, you've vested so much time. You're like, all right, fine. Let's just get through this. <laughs> It'll be an hour. In and out. Let's go. Okay, Do your well. business. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's like, all right, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> but then we we'll go back to that I'll watch cycle. the next season and I'll let you know if I don't like it. Maybe you will love it. <laughs> I'm still going to watch it. But it's going to be weird. Oh, and that's the other thing, too. The whole point of uh, Shia interacting with the movies, with Marvel, uh, this is very... It's not as important anymore. Winter Soldier was impactful because whatever happened there carried over to Angels of S.H.I.E.L.D. Which I didn't think it needed to. But no, but it was fine. Uh, the, the fallout of S.H.I.E.L.D. was a very big plot line, and that made perfect sense. But when we got the Age of Ultron... What was the connection? Oh, Coulson had an old flying ship that he lent Nick Fury, and then he comes back next week. See, that's how we do it on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, he had anything important to do with Age of Ultron. Not that it would have made it any better, but... And then this movie, with the, um, the Civil War movie, um, what was the connection? The Inhumans need to be registered for the uh, Scovia Accords, like they did with the, the regular superheroes. Right. So that was it. That was that connection. So I'm like, that's it. You're really like on a downward slope with me. So the whole I, reason was to connect every, the whole. Everything's all connected, and this is not working. I don't know. I just never saw why a TV show has to connect to a movie anyway. But well, it was. I, it, I, I think I, it was inventive to give you the best of both worlds until the new movie comes out you can watch the series in the meantime and then when the new one comes in continue that storyline but yeah now it's just it, so what are they doing next exactly oh okay well I can't wait to find out well they're not going to do humans anymore that's the other thing the whole movie that was going to be the 2019 was going to come out and now that storyline has been dropped by Disney so the whole point of doing humans now was going to be groundwork, but if there's no movie then there's no point to continue the Inhuman storyline. What movie was going to go out? An actual Inhumans movie. Oh. So... I didn't know about that either. I really don't keep up on this stuff. Well, that's why you need to listen to the Monster Sci-Fi Show podcast. I do, sometimes. Sometimes? <laughs> that's why my ratings suck. <laughs> you have to do it all the time. I'm sorry, I did miss the last couple, but it's on my list of things to do. Uh-huh. Maybe, maybe tonight. Maybe. I'll catch up and I'll post You should them. do it right now. Why after this, going to your next appointment, listen to me in the podcast on the way to your appointment. I don't have the capability of listening to a oh, podcast, Jesus. baby. I'm Why are we even talking? <laughs> <laughs> I can only do it from my computer at home. <laughs> You're really disappointed me today. It's <laughs> a Windows phone. You figure it I out. I know. It's a Windows phone. <laughs> As in, I'm going to throw that phone through that window. <laughs> Actually, I've, I've never tried. Can you listen to it on a phone? I have no idea. My battery dies anyway. Don't do it. We're not going to trust. We're not going to push the, the the boundaries of your phone. Okay. All right. So get so, back to something. Yeah. Obviously, so, much more important than that. 
So going back to um, oh, who are the charities that you're going to be doing for that's local that's here? Uh, the local charity that we chose. It's been a longtime favorite of a couple different nonprofits that I've been involved in over the years. It's uh, Pelican Harbor Seabird Station. They are located on 79th Street Causeway. They have a uh, they have a spot in the marina there. Okay. It was founded in 1980 by an elderly couple who mm-hmm. just were helping out pelicans. They would come across them with uh, hooks, hooks in their mouths, right. whatever, and it actually started out small like that, just two, two uh, I don't know if they were elderly at the time, mm. I think they were, but <laughs> they were just, they would help out an individual now. pelican here and there. I believe they both passed on. But. Uh, so anyway, so they started in 1980, they got more and more help from the county, they ended up getting the spot there mm-hmm. at the marina. And it's just grown into a pretty big nonprofit now. And the people that run it now, they're super, super nice. They've opened it up to where you can you can go to the facility, you can see some of the birds that they, because they, they don't do just pelicans, they right. rescue any and all. 156 different species were treated in 2014. Uh, over 193 species of native birds, so they, they will treat just about anything. I myself have taken many a bird there. Yeah. If you find an injured bird, they will take it. If they can save it, they will. They'll re-release it back in the area. Okay. If they can't, you know, at least they can put them down in the most humane way possible. But it's a really, really great uh, organization, and uh, they do a lot of uh, they do a lot of uh, outreach. Mm-hmm. They go to schools and stuff. They teach people what to, you know, how to avoid harming the wildlife. Okay. Especially with the fishermen and stuff, uh, mm. you know, you're not supposed to cut your lines. You're supposed to make sure you get those lures back. <laughs> right. They they do a lot of different things to try to educate, and because preventing the pelicans from getting there is obviously much more important than saving them later. So. Right. But, so that's our local charity, and they will be getting 25 percent of anything we get. 75 okay. percent will go to Equality now. Okay. Um, as far as because um, I know you do the raffles. You said you had a couple of graphic novels. Any other um, ideas? What I've be? got a couple of prints that I got from an artist at Wizard World last okay. year. Um, they're Firefly Serenity related uh, prints that are, we're going to have framed and we're going to okay. have those in the raffle. There's always a Jane Hat in the raffle right. made by yours truly. Uh, the national organization always sends us a box of goodies, mm-hmm. so I have not gone through that box yet, but I will. <laughs> I'll start posting pictures and such on our Facebook page. Uh, you can look us up under uh, SRF Brown Coats. Yes, and which I'll I'll post all that information on okay. the uh, on the podcast so, so people will have access to that. And the event is uh, there. There is an event page, so if you go on and like us and let us know if you're coming, there is limited seating in the facility. Although you know it would be great if we had standing room only. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should be lucky to have that problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is it um, kid-friendly, just in case someone wants to bring kids like I did? As long as you believe your child has a sense of humor and will enjoy Dr. Horrible and Serenity, yeah. I would say uh, yes, definitely okay. kid-friendly. Well, I mean, just because of, there's an op- not an open bar, but there's a bar. The facility that we are doing it at is a bar and grill. Yeah. It, we are in a separate room from the actual bar, so we will have our own wait staff and everything so you are separated yeah it is uh, it was voted the number one bar in miami in the miami new times just a couple weeks ago yes, it is. so if you wanted to hang out at the bar afterwards i'm sure they'd be thrilled mm-hmm. and, and is there any cover to go in no we will accept donations at the time but we do not charge for entry and we usually have uh, swag bags for sale mm-hmm. And all of that will be donations to the charities. Any of the raffle prizes, uh, any a, any money we get obviously goes right to the charity because right. there's really no overhead on this. Right. And we'll see what we can do. All right, so I think that's good. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Connie, for being a guest on the Monster Side Fi Show podcast. My very favorite podcast. And your only podcast. Um, not my only one. Oh. I have listened to one other podcast once several years ago. Several it years a, ago. Actually, it was a Buffy-related podcast. Okay, so I'm your favorite current podcast. You're my only current podcast. There you go. That makes me much, <laughs> feels much better. 
All right, Connie. Thank you again. Oh, wait. Can I do one shout out? Sure. If anybody is listening to this before they go to Florida Supercon this weekend, um, my friends that helped me put on the event, they've been helping me for the last nine years. Jennifer and Steve, they run a company or a little little personal business called Smash Art Studio, and they will have a booth at Supercon, booth number 1710. 1710. And they will have information on the event. They will have flyers and such you can pick up, and there's always some really good sci-fi related things, handmade and toys, all kinds of good stuff. So you might want to stop by and say hi to them. All right. All right, then. Thank Thank you. you. And I can't believe Mr. Gene was not here. Well, you know, Mr. Gene wishes he could be here, but he's... In here in spirit. Okay. But if you don't believe in spirit, that's why he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, Connie, thank you. All right, so that ends this podcast for this week. So, again, my apologies for not getting enough shows since the beginning of the month, but I'm doing my best and I'm trying to get a lot more shows put together so it won't be as time consuming but I want to get things swimming so I can come next month we are going to be doing several theme podcasts on Star Trek because of the new movie coming out as well as we'll eventually do the review of Ghostbusters the new female franchise of Ghostbusters so thank you very much for listening to the Monster Sci-Fi show any comments, complaints criticism, anything you can email me at show at gmail.com. Find me all over different social networks. So again, thank you for listening to the Monster Sci-Fi Show. Sci-Fi from a certain point of view. Good night. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network, your station for all things geek, classic, current, and beyond. Be part of the crew at esonetwork.com.